Hi, I'm Mimi Chan. Welcome to Culture Chat. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hi, everyone. The election is underway, and I have already voted. Have you? In this episode, Greg Rucka responds to the most frequent objections to voting and reasons for abstaining. There is a lot of information out there on the World Wide Web. However, there is also a lot of misinformation. This conversation can get highly political, so I hope you listen with an open mind. After all, listening is a great way to learn. The early voting period is crucial, so get out there and vote. For fun, we also discuss recent reads, TV shows, and the upcoming Borat subsequent movie film, Delivery of Prodigious Bride to American Regime for Make Benefit Once Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan, also simply known as Borat 2. I probably should have just went with that. I've also listed some voter links and guides to help you get out there and exercise your American right to vote. For those that don't already know, Greg Rucka is a New York Times bestselling author of hundreds of comics and nearly two dozen novels. He is also the writer for the hit film The Old Guard, starring Charlize Theron. I'm loving these conversations and hope you are too. If you are, please rate my podcast on your platform of choice and share it with others. If you would like to support with a donation to help keep this podcast going, you can do so on my website or visiting patreon.com slash Chan. For comments or suggestions, email me at mimi at culturechatpodcast.com or reach out on social media at Chan. Now on with the show. Oh, Greg. Oh, or- no, no. Hello, hello, Mimi. We, no, let's <laughs> right, roll right, with right. it. Because hello, hello, Greg Rucka. <laughs> hello, hello, Mimi. How are you? I'm well now that you're here. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you you say sweet things. <laughs> All true. We were gonna. All genuine. We, we were just saying. We were just saying that this is the uh, 12 days to the election recording. But uh, the reason I interrupted myself was that it's actually not. It's 12 days until the end of the election recording (laughs) we are in the election that is right that Um, is right go vote go and vote now now exactly (laughs) listen to this while you are voting (laughs) listen to this at the criminally long lines and they should be criminal long uh criminally long lines at your polling place that you are no doubt having to wait in if you do not have the benefit of voting by mail yes well and uh, even or to live in a privileged white neighborhood. <laughs> well, um, but those that are um, in in Florida and Orange County, I've been posting my stuff and letting you guys know, like, here are all the places that you can go and vote mm-hmm. in person early. But there's also those lovely drop boxes. And in Florida, you still have a little bit of time um, to get those if or if you have them and you just haven't gotten around. But it's it also tells you the wait time at the places. So at least you can look ahead Very of good. time and go, hey, I have a lunch. Oh, no, it's an hour now. And you could kind of gauge it so you don't feel like, well, I'm not going to have time today. You would be surprised. Sometimes it says 10 minutes. So I've been kind of monitoring. So please, please just check and and go and do it early do not wait until november please do not wait no it, it, the, the 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 sooner the yeah. better there was a, a story in the guardian yesterday that i was looking mm-hmm. at uh, and oh my god man wow that was a mistake not a good headline to be found <laughs> um i'm gonna need to find a kitten meme really quickly <laughs> Uh, holy mackerel but there was a thing and i mean i think was in georgia literally like you know the guardian released a study saying that in african-american neighborhoods it's taking i mean something like 90 percent longer than in white neighborhoods to cast your back i mean come on guys (laughs) that just this is there's no question what this is it's voter suppression yes. you know there's a reason that this the republicans did this and there's a reason they're shitting themselves in terror right now and there's a reason that as we speak you know amy comey uh handmaid's tale <laughs> is, is racing to her seat on the supreme court i know it's and oh god it's so much stuff going it ain't, on it ain't gonna help you know, all it's going to do is, again, it's, you know, what 
people who have not stayed with the world and who are desperately trying to dig in their feet and keep the tide of, you know, time from actually happening, sticking their little, you know, pinky fingers in, into the, the dike here as it is cracking and bursting. This is, you know, I've been saying this for years and years and years. It goes back to that quote, you know, the, the arc of the moral universe is long. And I cannot, you know, I, I, I cannot discern it by sight alone. I can divine it by conscience. But from everything I see, you know, it bends towards the good. And it, it, there is a gravity to morality, you know, that you can resist it for only so long, but eventually gravity is going to win. I mean, meet, meet, you know, meet your neighborhood black hole. It, it, it may take a really long time. And these are setbacks. These are not... It, you know, even in the worst case scenario, it's not an ultimate defeat. It's, it'll be a bad one in the worst case scenario, but in the end, they're still going to lose. Still going to lose. <laughs> you know, what, I, I'm going to be 51 at the end of November, and my hope is that I just live to see them lose. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a little. But crazy. I am a petty and vindictive <laughs> man. Yes, it has, it has, it has been. It's been crazy, crazy but the, you know, I'm in Florida, and as you know, we find a mm -hmm. way to f up every election. Uh, we are always on the map and in the news for a hey, in 2000 and a hey, in 2004, and mm -hmm. and and I've seen it. So people always say, "Oh, voter suppression isn't real," and we were out helping the youth vote that at at one of the elections. I don't even remember which year. This this, this isn't new. This isn't like, oh, yeah. guess what? Now the Republicans are trying to stop voting. And it was. It was polls were closing earlier at places where mm -hmm. it was more uh, Hispanic and black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Polls were just backed up. And so people weren't able to vote because they just got off work and there was only an hour and the yeah. lines were too long. And it it was a legit thing, like with my own two, yeah. you know, it it was not fabricated or quote unquote fake news it was for real and and even this yeah. round you and i have spoken about this in extensive measures to try to help people bring awareness but it, even just getting registered to vote has changed in orange county in orlando florida oh and yeah even they just have... trying to get a ballot and then filling out that ballot so i was really relieved when i went to do my drop off mail in they sit there and they go, well, let me check it before you drive off, that the signature mm -hmm. would be counted. And here's the website where you go and it'll show you if it's been counted. Please check it. At least there was someone there trying to assist with this. So I, I just want to say again, thank you to our poll workers and volunteers yeah. who are out there risking themselves Michael, and, doing, and doing what's uh, good for the community. Michael... Michael sent an email last week saying, so it's going to be a little late on uh, coming Lazarus pages. I, I, I'm I, I'm signed up to be a poll oh. worker. My daughter is signed up. I mean, this is look. There is a reason why voting early, in particular, in this election, is crucial. Mm -hmm. The you know, I mean, look. Yeah, whole digression here, but if you're gonna say that you're a democracy, then everybody's got to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. So, um, do the math, you know, I mean, it's just, so what does that say about the current state, right? That, and, and, and what does it say about the party in power that they have gone to, if you think about it, extraordinary lengths, I mean, genuinely extraordinary lengths to keep people from voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only reason that they do that is because they know they're in the wrong. And it's been a long plan. It wasn't like yesterday they oh, just yeah. said, hey, no, let's this do this is... to block it. This is 30, 40 plus yeah. years in the making of gerrymandering times this, mm -hmm. times that, times it's just been an accumulation. And now I think at least, at least there's some more awareness. Right. So at least people are catching on and realizing, wow, this is really happening. Our democracy is really fragile. I, I, I think we actually have hit. Um, yeah, I just I, 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 I will be very curious to see what happens post-election, because I think that there is a level of. 
outrage <laughs> that is not going to go away. And there is also a level of, and this goes to the pre going live in our podcast, how are you doing <laughs> questions, which is, you know, regardless of, I, I think most people, I, I, I don't think, I don't think most people want to have to spend as much time thinking about politics as we all have had to do recently, number one. Number two, I think the vast majority of people who did not vote in the last election uh, are voting in this election because they are sick and tired of it. They just want this over. They just want it done. And what I mean by this is Trump. They want it done. They, they, they've had enough, right? It, 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 at a certain point, isn't even about policy. It's about mental health mm -hmm. and, and, and emotional health. And that goes to the how are you doing? Honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fine this morning. I got up early. I made a little fire in our outdoor fire pit. I had some coffee, you know. I did my self-care things, I answered emails, now we're talking, but I mean, I'm sleeping like crap, and everybody is... Fatigued. Yeah, we're just feeling it. It's like, can we just be done with it, man? Can we just be done? Yeah. It's been a long, Can we just long be road done? for sure. I think, I think what I wanted to talk to you about today, especially was, you know, this is going to go out uh, for, for those listeners that haven't voted yet or that say that, oh, I'm just so unsure. And I know we find that completely insane, but you would be surprised how many people, especially here in Florida, I've spoken to that, that come up with all these things or these reasons they're trying to justify with themselves on why it's still okay to vote for 45, even though I, I really really do believe deep down, like they don't believe that. And so I was thinking maybe I would say or ask you all these different questions and and as asinine <laughs> and as crazy as some of them sound to you and I, I mean, we could talk ourselves in circles and be like, yeah, because we both agree, obviously. But I think you always, you I, I always credit you for being able to put things in the right way. So I had a conversation yesterday, for example, oh my God. And, and this was the conversation. And of course, this morning I heard, you know, the daily and it talked about the electoral vote. And I was like, oh, if I had thought of that, I could have said these things yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so I thought maybe we could arm some of our listeners who are on board with us to also be able to communicate to people around them, because I think it's more than just saying you're dumb because you want to vote for this person. That doesn't get us anywhere. Right. I think it, it, it has to be. Yeah, that and that's my problem is that I have, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm so out of patience but, with the whole, if you don't get it now, yes, you're never but I But to. I think you still have a really craftful as well as informed way of, of explaining things. So for example, it was, well, if, if um, Biden was a strong enough candidate, he would win without my vote. And even though I don't believe in 45, because, you know, I, I don't I believe that 45's name is like Beetlejuice. So I just don't want him to like show up yeah. in my house. So I try to avoid saying it at all times. But basically, you know, my response was, well, you know, I get you have your own principles. But in Florida, especially it's that's not how our democracy works. Right. So, I mean, Hillary well, yeah, won the I mean, popular the vote by three million. So yeah, you won the electoral and, and, by seventy thousand. That's math, right? It just doesn't. That's yeah. not how our democracy actually operates. Exactly, and and the argument that my vote isn't needed is okay. Well, the first thing is if you don't vote, then you don't get to complain about anything. Correct. Yeah. All right. So that's the first thing. If you're not going to engage in your right to vote, then you do not get to complain. All right. If you genuinely think that things today are better than they were four years ago, right? Then you know who to vote for and then commit to it, own it, all right? If you do not, you need to vote to change it. It is an American, you know, if you are proud to be an American, then you should be proud to exercise your right to vote. It is 
a fundamental right that wasn't fundamental for so many in this country for so long. And for so many people, other countries. Uh, uh, and, and people have died for it. And people have bled for it. And the idea that, well, if, I mean, I, that is a bizarre argument to me. If Biden was a strong enough candidate, it wouldn't be necessary. And the response to that is, right, if everything in the system is fair and is equitable. So do you know, for instance, that in a county larger than the state of Delaware in Texas right now, there's only one place to go polling. Is that fair? Is that right? Do you think that's balanced? All right. Do you feel that the people's voice is going to be heard? And you just, and you pointed it out yourself. If you believe in the, if you believe in being an American, then your vote must matter. All right? That the electoral college workaround here to the result to the popular vote is a significant one, and to ensure, and the, and, and and the Trump campaign has already admitted how they are going to try to game this, right? Uh, then the only, or, or the, the first line of defense against that is, is casting your vote mm -hmm. and to take away that option. All right, so that's, th those are all, I think, very basic arguments. Yes. No, but I still I think, think it's, it's, it's like anything else. You could say something, I could repeat it, Oscar could say it, Jen could say it, and somehow we said the same thing. Somehow one of us would get through to somebody different, right? And so it's it's really right. interesting. And I, I often think what you say resonates. So I feel like it's great that you're able to verbalize it. Right. Well, but you and I you writer. and I create a very <laughs> you and I create a very, very effective echo chamber though, Mimi. I mean, we just this you is know, what I mean, uh, though. This is why I want to bring these things up. So, okay, so let's say that the, the, the next step is, well, I don't like either, so I'm going to vote for Howie Hawkins, or I had to look this up, of course, Joe Jurgen and mm -hmm. the other ones on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, is it the same argument, then? It's like, you're, is it, do you well, say... It's, it's, it, it, there is a time and a place for a protest mm -hmm. vote. Look at the situation right now and, 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 and really consider. Because in this situation right now, a protest vote is not a, a vote against Joe Biden. It's a vote for Donald mm -hmm. Trump. It isn't a vote for your libertarian candidate or your Green Party candidate or your constitutional candidate. It isn't. It is effectively, it, like I say, it's not a protest vote right now. Yeah. It, because you're not looking at a viable option. There is no viable third party. What may well come out of this election, regardless of how it resolves, is a viable third mm -hmm. party, mm -hmm. right? Because in the case of a Biden win, the Republican Party is going to have to become something else entirely. And let's face it, for a lot of people, Democrats are too centrist, you know? There are a lot of people, this is a lot of the settle for Biden. I don't know if you've seen mm -hmm. this account on Instagram. Yes. You know, there's a reason Bernie Sanders is saying you got to vote for Joe. And, and you got to vote for Joe because there is no way forward with Trump. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I don't, I think the court is a really good example of it. You know, there have been the more justices have been nominated by the Republicans than by the Democrats in the last 20 years. All right. And the what the Supreme Court does is not abstract. And people make the mistake of thinking it is. Whether or not a cop can come to your home, kick in the door and shoot you is determined by the Supreme Court. 
whether or not the fire department has to respond to your house when it is on fire is determined by the Supreme Court. Ultimately, it comes down to these things, right? Whether or not you go into an emergency room after having been stabbed in vital need of immediate medical care and must be given that care is going to be decided by the Supreme Court. Whether or not when you are 70 or 80 or 90 and are infirm and cannot care for yourself and do not want to be left in a cold, dark apartment with the power off and nobody checking on you is ultimately going to be decided by the Supreme Court. The disposition of the court is primarily driven by the administration in, in, in office and the Senate. And we see it right now. I mean, we absolutely see it right now. What is happening right now is gross and is absolutely in opposition to the will of the American people. Correct. There is not a single poll, not one poll, that says the overwhelming majority of Americans believe the Republicans are doing the right thing. There is not, you can't find that poll. It doesn't, it's not there. Most Americans believe that the Republicans are being total shits about this and hypocrites, and they see it. Mm -hmm. All right. So a decision not to vote to say they're all the same is patently not true. I mean, and it is, it's patently not true. And, and anybody who says it's all the same, then you say, really, do you think four years ago, if Clinton had won the election, there would be concentration camps? Do you think there would be 545 children whose parents cannot be found? Do you think the rise in white supremacy and violence across the country against people of color, against Jews, against Muslims, against gays? Do you think the, oh, yeah, you saw that Purdue Pharma got fined nothing. Eight billion bucks, nothing. They have hundreds of billions. Do you think, you know, that Russia is our ally? Really? I mean, do you answer these questions? Do you think North Korea can be trusted? Mm -hmm. Do you think the genocide of an entire people in China should go unremarked? I mean, do, these are the questions. Because if the answer to those is, I, I'm fine with all of that, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect me, ask yourself why it doesn't affect you. You know, I mean, really ask yourself why it doesn't count. Yeah, I mean, I think Does deep it, down, though, people know, right? It's like way, but they just push it way deep down. Like I get to hear, here's another one. Um, well, the Republican Party has always been my party. And the ones that have failed to recognize that it is not the same one anymore, I don't really know what to say. But I yeah, feel like then, they know deep down, you know, and you just have to, like, shake it out of them. But so Well, and, and saying, look, so, okay, I respect that. Do you agree with everything the party has been doing? Do you agree with the majority of what the party right. has done? Do you, do you think it was appropriate, it is appropriate for... Republicans to be going out there and saying the things that they're saying and doing the things they're doing. Because if you do, then absolutely vote for Trump because you are saying, I am fine with race. I'm, I'm a racist, homophobe, white supremacist. Mm -hmm. But don't pretend you're not. That's the thing I can't stand. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. If you don't have a problem with the, these policies, then go to the logical conclusion. All right. Stop pretending. Don't look at me and say, I value you. You don't. Mm -hmm. Your vote says you don't. Right. All right. And, and, and the argument though, well, I'm a lifelong Republican. It's like, well, then maybe you ought to t take a look at the Lincoln project. 
maybe you ought to take a look at all of these Republicans who have actually come out and said, I'm voting for Biden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I'm voting for Joe Biden. A ask, ask yourself, okay, the majority of your party's leadership right now is endorsing Biden. Why is that? <laughs> if that's where the thinking Republicans are going, and I am willing to grant that there are some thinking Republicans. <laughs> they're just not right? active right now, apparently. It's unfortunate because they're all the ones that are like retired. No, they're, or, they're, you know, I just, they're, they're spineless. The Senate, yeah, because no the, one in the Senate's you know, standing up. No. Not, not one. one. And it's so frustrating because you you know and deep here's down the thing. they can't possibly I, bought into this. So maybe your folder, uh, Putin's folder on each of them thing is true because I'm like, what I, is the motivation other than their power? And because that that's at stake, really, at this point. It's all up there. Oh, yeah. All the chips on the table now, right? Oh no, they, they, you've got Lindsey Graham coming out saying, oh my God, they're coming after me because of my support of Trump and my defense of Kavanaugh. It's like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> You're being held to account for what you That's did. Right. That's what an election is. That's what this is about. And them pretending like to be shocked or you know, Mitch McConnell or whoever saying, oh my God, this will be the end of our party if the Democrats get power. I hope so. Because you have proven you cannot govern mm -hmm. it's not a question of lead <coughs> right what the republicans have done and this maybe is the core question all right is to say look the republicans have had all the power for four years they've absolutely had it if you think that that's right and good and things are better now and you like the direction the country is going you've made a choice if you don't, then you know what you need to do at the ballot, right? I mean, it's clear. This is, this, is, this is just a basic truth. And it doesn't come down to party allegiance, right? It comes down to do you want to be in this situation we're in right now in a year? Because it'll be worse. Yeah. It's not going to get well, better. Well, I think a lot of that depends on what news channel you watch, right? So according to uh, Fox and, and and all of these other right-wing news outlets, 45 yeah. is great for the economy. He's kept his promises. He's America first. You know, he did the best he okay. could with the COVID information. So get in your car, get in your car, put on a mask, drive through downtown wherever, and look at how many businesses have closed. Mm -hmm. Look at how many places that you used to love to go that are shuttered. You can't even go to the movies. Not just because yeah. of the COVID, but also they're closed. Like it's. Yeah. No, but I mean, think, think yeah. you know, restaurants so, and small businesses and even do corporates. You, yeah. it, if, if you absolutely, I mean, and, and this is, you know, the, the stupidity of having to argue this. Point. <laughs> We're trying to. Inform. No, no, no. So, so start, <laughs> start with this basic one. Okay. Do you believe in germs? <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you believe that germs are transmitted through surfaces and contact between individuals? Um, well, I do. Yes. All right. Okay. But that's an extension. Yes. So if you believe in germs, but you don't believe that they can be transmitted, it's like, what, why, do you, why do you not believe it? Okay. So hang on. Wait. So the next one is, so if you are... You know, you're, you're, you're in, one would presume that your parents raised you to cover your mouth when you sneeze, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. cough. Why did they do that? <laughs> so you don't cough Not on Not to spread germs, <laughs> yes. right. Okay. <clears throat> Is the flu transmitted between people? Have you ever had it mm -hmm. before? When you got it, can you remember thinking, oh my God, I got it from X or I got it when I was at that place, <laughs> right, yeah. right? I know how I got this cold, I caught it mm -hmm. here. Okay. If there is a virus right now that is literally has killed, will, will have in the next couple of days killed over a quarter of a million Americans, just Americans. Mm -hmm. And it's killed well over a million worldwide. And we don't have a vaccine for it. And 
we do not have the adequate science yet at this point to know even how to fight it when you're in the hospital, right? We have a variety of techniques, but it's hit or miss. Um, if, if that's the case, does it not make sense to say, wear a mask to prevent inhaling something that may be airborne, right? Like, you know, you see and have seen all your life doctors doing when they are operating on TV or whatnot. Right. Yeah, that was a big one. Like, okay. oh, well, just tell your doctor not to use a mask when they do surgery on you yeah. then if you feel so comfortable. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. So if you go, no, all of this makes sense and I should wear a mask, then ask yourself, why is the White House telling you not to? I mean, what, what, what is the logic in that? What is the common sense logic? Is the White House concerned with your life? Because if they are, they'd tell you to wear a mask. Well, um, so they're, t- so hang on. So they're, so they're saying not, they, they don't, yeah. which means what are they concerned with? They're concerned with the economy. They're concerned with money. You are a dollar sign to them, not a person. You're, you don't, literally, you do not exist to these people. Mm-hmm. I make that connection, but I literally have recently, as a week ago, heard, well, it's not that I don't believe in germs or that this is a virus, but I think the pandemic is a hoax because maybe we'll all get it in the same way as we get the, I I just don't know where this information is coming from, but it's bizarre to me because these are also humans that I know to be relatively intelligent enough to gather information. And so somehow what's the purpose of the the white house has convinced such a huge part of the country that don't worry, you're going to be fine. I don't know. Yeah, I get, I, 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 it's just bizarre though that, but that's the They're question. Okay I mean, it. if somebody says it's a hoax, right. ask the next question. Really? Why? <laughs> and th- what are they going to come back with? Uh, the, the, the medical industry is trying to drive sales of PPE? <laughs> um, no, seriously. Okay. Why would they do that? Yeah, yeah. Why would they do that when it makes much more sense to keep charging $700 a dose of insulin? PPE is cheap. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So what, what is the other benefit of this hoax? To scare people? Into what? Into changing their behavior? Into what? This has been good for nobody. Yeah. yeah. It's been good for nobody has benefited from the pandemic. The only people who have remotely benefited from the pandemic are three you know, trillionaires in this country. <laughs> Zoom. Zoom has probably benefited. That's about it. Yeah. You know, but I mean, but Elon right. Musk has done great. Yeah. You know, uh, Bezos has done great. Yeah. Am- you know what yeah, I mean? Amazon. I mean, look, ask yourself who benefits from this. Who is perpetuating the hoax? Who is perpetuating the mm-hmm. hoax? What is the benefit of that hoax? Yeah. Really, what is the benefit? Who, this is, this is always the question that has to be asked at the root of any conspiracy theory, all right? And there's a great, um, and I am now going to try to find it. Here we go, conspiracies, the ultimate conspiracy disbunk, debunker. They put this up five years ago, <laughs> all right? Um, and, and I am going to share this link with you right now okay. and see if you can put it in when we... Uh, when this goes live <laughs> all right but it is it is it is a beautiful beautiful elegant entertaining um education in in in, in, in how to apply critical right, thought right right all right well, critical thought is missing um, in education That's, this is a digression well, we could take it on another it, day but it is it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's it's a technique yeah yeah, I mean, it, it, again. I mean, it, kids—they don't get in, to learn that. It's 
if you learn to take tests, but that, right. there's a, there's the difference there, yeah. right? It has been removed. Yeah. This is again, we've talked about this yes. before. This is why the GOP does not like higher education. Higher education thrives on critical thought. <laughs> Um, and that's the thing, you know, almost every, almost every, oh, the answer to almost everything you are posing, Mimi, is, have you asked yourself why you think mm -hmm. that? I mean, just ask yourself why. Somebody says, well, I don't think there's a difference. You say, why? Why? Tell me why. Yeah. I want to understand why you think there's no difference. Mm -hmm. They, well, they're both rich white guys. Uh-huh. Okay, let's talk about what that means. We now know that Trump isn't. Mm -hmm. He pretends. And we also know that Biden isn't compared to, oh, say, some of the astronomical wealth that's out yeah. there. <laughs> so, so one of these guys has lied about how rich he is. And we now know for a fact is in debt to China and Russia, right? And the other guy we know isn't, though the Republicans have tried to imply that there was, and, and we're unable to prove uh, that there was some shady dealings going mm -hmm. on. And, but see, that's okay. what's frustrating. All they have to do is imply it, and then people believe it. And then in, in the same regard, it's it's unbelievable to me that, Okay, one, oh, well, he's a great businessman. Oh, well, he's proven not to be. Well, I admire him because he was able to evade taxes. Like, no matter what, they're able to kind of take it and put that spin on it where they there's this connection. And I, I, I have very, I have, I'm just kind of like in awe of the ability to just be like kind of the master of distraction as well as turning Abby. things. It's like that character in, in, in Animal Farm, the one that was like doing all the propaganda. Was it Squealer? I don't know why this is jumping in my head, but, but he, they're just able to put a spin on But that's exactly it. right. Because, because all of our critical faculties have been eroded. The media doesn't question it. This goes back to the fairness, the fairness doctrine, doctrine stuff we yes. talked about. <laughs> All right. I mean, this, the, the, these are these are hand in hand. There is a reason these things. There's a reason we're in this situation. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I and mean, the media got him elected last time. All that free, yes. all that free media, free marketing. I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? Stop airing him. You know. I mean, they they yeah. they single handedly. Well, they they made a lot of money yeah. off of it. So yeah. you know, it was it was worth it. Um, but but that frustration in lies where he does reach this demographic that feels they feel left out from this country for whatever reason they feel like or he's able to tap into these pipe dreams like i was listening to a podcast and it was like a mexican american and he's a hard working guy and he was like well this is my reasoning why it's you know i i believe that he's helping me with my american dream and he was able to get rich and i can i mean that he's able to tap into this vulnerability or this like dream that a lot of people have and i it's kind of amazing actually i was able to kind of draw that connectivity to people that completely are not going to benefit from anything that this administration is doing or will do, but yet they make them feel that way. Like, that, yeah, they cheerfully, they, they buy the yes, lie. Yeah. Um, and it's frustrating. <laughs> look, I mean, uh, <laughs> look, we, we have spent a lot of time on this and, and I, I genuinely feel at this point, and I'll be honest, I don't have an interest in changing anybody's mind. They're wrong. They've doubled down on being wrong, and they're proud of being wrong. And on some level, I think they know they're wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because like, at the end down, of the day, right? at the end of the day, what Trump validates more than anything else is not that guy's bullshit masturbatory wank off. Oh, I could be like him. No, you fucking can't. Daddy's not giving you a million bucks to start your business. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not. Okay? So what Trump is really validating for you is, I don't have to care about anybody else but me. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the Republican Party thrives on telling you it's okay 
not to care about anybody else. That you are the most important person, you are the only person that matters, and nobody else does. That's ultimately what this election is about. So if you want a world, a country, where if you get hit by a car, nobody feels it necessary to stop the car, let alone to help you out, you know who to vote for. It comes down to that, and it is as simple as yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it really is. That's what this is about. It goes back to the, I've got mine and fuck you. Mm -hmm. If you believe that my having a little less so you can have a little more, so everybody can do a little better, actually leads to a better world and ultimately leads to more for all, then you know which way you, you want to go. Um, I, and like I say, I'm, I'm you know, I, I appreciate you wanting to engage this. <laughs> I, 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 no, yeah. I just, I don't have that patience anymore. <laughs> and I've actually had a conversation yesterday with a friend of mine about the fact that, you know, should Biden win, then things go as I hope they go. I'm wondering how many people I haven't heard from in four plus years are going to reach out to me and pretend they never voted for Trump <laughs> and will be shocked when I say, you're dead to me. Hmm. You're dead to me. Because that's what this is about, ultimately. Any person who is okay with Trump is somebody who is okay with saying black people should be shot that the Chinese are, and, and, and I'm looking at you, meaning <laughs> you know, created this evil virus or this hoax or whatever, that all Jews are, you know, media controlling, money grubbing, rulers of the globe who need to be stopped, that all Muslims are terrorists and must die. I mean, that is literally what they're voting for. They're literally, literally voting for that. Mm -hmm. And, okay, then just fucking admit it. Don't pretend it's anything else. Don't tell me, oh, I believe in the unborn child's right to life. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you did believe that, you would not believe in a need for capital punishment. Jesus didn't preach capital punishment. Jesus fucking died because of capital punishment. All right? Well, so you don't believe that you don't believe that you all, you don't believe that all life is sacred because as soon as that baby is exactly. popped out, you don't care what That's happens where I was to going it. With that. I was like, Oh, I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about what happens so after the fact. This poor yeah, child comes into society and is in foster exactly, care. Or don't, is getting abused. don't pretend. Don't pretend. Don't tell me that. Oh, I, they're going to take my guns. How many guns do you need? Let's ask that one first. Do you know how many guns there are in America right now? Oh, yeah. More do the than Google people. search. <laughs> oh, a hundred times more than people. It's, All right. I mean, totally literally. It's insane if you think about that. Uh, it it's is. Insane. It's an industry that has to be, right? Because how many guns do you need? Yeah. Is this, this, it is the same thing. Forget about, don't say guns. Say cars. All right. Don't talk about firearms. Let's talk about the automotive industry. Wouldn't the automotive industry love it if we all had to have five cars <laughs> or six cars or eight cars, right? If they could convince you that the government was going to take your cars away. Yeah, everyone would be stocking up. <laughs> exactly. Because selling you the same thing four or five times is a great business model. <laughs> It's what Apple lives on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, the, the whole Apple business model is, yeah, it's sexy, but we'll give you a new one in another year and a half and nothing you have will work on it. <laughs> so you'll need to get it, all right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's... Back to greed. Yes. It's always about money. It's always about the money. Which is so sad. 
Yeah. You want to try to find a high note to go out <laughs> on since I'm going to have to go in a bit? Do we have any questions? <laughs> those were some of the... Lazarus will be those out. Those were some of the um, questions. <laughs> I did oh, put Jesus. out like a, you know, it, I mean, I, but, and I know it seemed frustrating and it feels like we are repeating ourselves and repeating ourselves and banging our heads against the wall. But I actually still truly believe like if one single person hears it and is able to say, oh, you know, my aunt changed their mind. I think that that is yeah. worthwhile. You know, I think it's worthwhile. But, so I mean, there's there's a piece of me that kind of wants to say, okay, look, just just for the sake of argument, person who is telling me, well, this is what the media is telling me or this mm -hmm. is what's going on, right? Just just for the sake of argument. Um, look to two other news sources. Mm -hmm. All right. Go to CNN or the BBC or the New York Times or the Guardian. Don't like if you start at Fox News, fine. Look for that same story at two other yeah. sites. And think about what you're reading. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about media and the variances and, of course, back to the fairness doctrine and the fact that nobody has to be held accountable. I mean, and kind of going back to tying that all in, though, a big part of the, the reason the problem is because of the information we're getting is misinformation it is is skewed right and so we it's even mm -hmm. even take politics away i had this argument with my mom this morning about coconut oil for example and it's like well i read this and i read this and i read this i'm like if you don't drink it every day for like you know and put it in eight ounces like if you just use little bits of whatever i mean you should, you should be, be okay. okay it's not this toxic thing but somebody decided to put out there that it's like no but it's gonna raise your you know your saturated fat count whatever and i'm like well that gives us the rabbit hole of cholesterol numbers but inflammatory markers and blah 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 like we could keep going but i said mom you could also find news on the internet that says 45 is good right and you no know, she doesn't believe that like she she, no, 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 no. I you you told me oh, what she yes, prays yes, for. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, you know. She, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. She did not believe that, and then she was like, "Huh, okay." I was like, "So the internet is not a reliable source." <laughs> well, sure, exactly. Look for more than one. Right, right, and then look for who is saying it. What is yeah. their motive? Like you said, ask why. What's the motivation? But I don't know if this is a good note. But are, have you seen the the thing with the Borat two, and then the stuff with Giuliani and just his films in general and his shows? I do not know how he does it. Uh yeah. <laughs> I, I I I I I I watch those and I go. I am. Um, I I don't think I do anything in my life where I could end up on one of them. <laughs> but I hope to God not, because I'm pretty sure I would fall I mean, it's it. unbelievable. And a lot of you people know? say, oh, that's acting, until you see him with like a politician or someone you know. Because yeah. some of the and people they, he finds, you think there's no way these guys are no, putting not, dresses on not to acting. infiltrate Kinsanaras or whatever. But like, yes. but the, the of course, the, the movie, I think it's coming out tomorrow in our time. And this will be released <laughs> by then. But, you know, Giuliani's all like, that wasn't, real or wasn't me or you know it wasn't like accurate yes, it was. and i can't yeah. i mean it's it's kind of crazy like this guy's like some sort of genius borat you know like Sasha Baron yeah. Cohen. no like, he's he very is, very smart. i don't even know how he keeps a straight face let's just start with that <laughs> yeah no ne ne neither do i trust me i um I have no clue how he managed yeah, it. Yeah, because his um, Showtime show and it's escaping. Was it made in America or it's something America? Um, yeah, that show is outrageous as well. Like <laughs> I find it. I mean, I find a lot of his stuff genuinely difficult. That's to watch. what my friend just told me. She's like, um, I can't even watch it. It's too painful. I'm like, I think it's fascinating yeah. that he's able to just I, go all the way with it and put himself it, in peril too. Like there's yeah, times no, I'm like he, he's, he's about to get shot. <laughs> yeah, no, his commitment is absolute. Uh, I, I uh, there is no he's doubt. Like borderline uh, crazy. He's got to have a little crazy in him to go that far, right? <laughs> yeah, there's 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 a passionate commitment at work. 
yeah, there's some sort of a, a genius about it, but also crazy about it. But I thought, oh my God, yeah. he's making headlines right now because he's just, and it's like silent. You never know when he's going to hit. Like all of a sudden, no. here's all Well, because stuff. that's what it, that's exactly what it yeah. operates on though, right? It's got to be, if you see it coming, it's not going to work. But the thing is that he's been doing it for so long. Yeah, yeah. And people and still, they still keep, keep falling I'm like, how does he do it? How does he even get the interviews? How does he get, you know, people to sign on and oh. It's just crazy. So I'm I'm interested though to see um, the the film and to see what what's what's behind these crazy doors and stuff. So I don't know. Have you watched anything enjoyable? I loved Enola Holmes. That was enjoyable. I have not seen it yet. I'm saving it. And I had a friend yesterday tell me that I really need to watch Ted Lasso. Oh, okay. Um, and it's funny because I remember when the Ted Lasso stuff uh, started. You know, it started as a series of shorts on on. Uh, NBC Sports mm -hmm. um, when they first got the Premier League and they were amusing there but I was like I'm not sure this is where I want to be <laughs> you know so but I, I have a, a friend Richard um, who, who who last night was like you should watch it I think you'll mm, like it okay. and it's, it's warm heart yeah and yeah but, I haven't you know, caught anything main, else Look, I am I I'm on defense. I've been um um <clears throat> I'm reading a novel right now I'm really enjoying when I get the time for mm -hmm. it. And it's a technically <clears throat> technically it's a young adult novel. Oh, do but, tell. Um, it was put in front of me. It's called Middle Game. Middle Game. Okay, I haven't by Seanan McGuire. Okay. And I am really enjoying it. Yeah, that. all right. Um and and enjoying it. And this is not a genre I normally go. Right. To. I was shocked because I was like, "That's my genre." Uh, Do tell, Greg. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. It is not. It is not a genre I normally go to, but I am really enjoying it. Um, but I haven't been. What you know? Look, and I think I've talked about this before. Like my TV viewing is. You know, I, I get into bed at night and we watch Antiques Roadshow <laughs> yes, until it's time to yes, go to sleep. Yes. You mentioned. Um, and. Right now, I'm a little annoyed because the only antique road shows I've got now are all reasons <laughs> and, and I'm really having to scrape the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> well, yeah, but we, I I don't have a lot of time to watch. Yes, stuff, yes, so. I understand. Yeah, we're behind as well because I like you know I've been in editing mode because I'm doing this show mm -hmm. for my father and I we surprised I him. I'm super excited about it though, and we're gonna release it on November seven. Quick plug to everybody, and we're raising money for St. Jude. But uh, Oscar and I, so here's a funny story you might find amusing, is that we thought we finished The Good Place, right? Oh. But apparently we didn't. We thought it actually ended with this like esoteric, um, Eleanor ends up taking over and Chidi gets his mind wiped. We thought it was some sort of philosophical like ending. Oh my God, you didn't know there was a whole other season? This is how <laughs> disconnected we are. Exactly. This is how we are like, you know, we are kind of like neophytes when it comes to TV because we we just, it's so far and few in between. We don't really get to binge that much with our time. Like if a project comes up, that's it. We're, we're disconnected. And sort of like Netflix said, oh, The Good Place season. And I'm like, what? There's another, they made another season. I text my friend. I'm like, hey, there's another season. They're like, what do you mean? And then, <laughs> and then I realized, oh, no. Everyone else in the world has seen it already except for us. And so we finally finished The Good Place. And so that was enjoyable. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Oscar and I are so behind the times, man. We were just like, everything's over our head. I was like, oh, okay. But so that was nice that we had that to have. So it was, it was actually good. We had it saved up because, you know, we need stuff like that. I loved oh. it. I, I think, I don't know how far we're done now. Are. We're done. I, we're complete. I, I'm oh, okay. sure now I, we're completely finished. <laughs> I'm, I have never seen Shit's Creek, so I don't know how warranted it was, but I'm kind of appalled that Harper, um, it, it, that William Jackson Harper didn't, didn't win an Emmy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we. That the show didn't win an Emmy. I thought it was. Uh, I've seen enough of Shit's Creek to say that uh, I think The Good Place is at least you know, comparable, if not in yeah. some ways better. Like, uh, I mean, I adore, um, 
oh my gosh, I can't believe her name is is escaping me at the moment. Um, but um, I, I adore the cast, Eugene Levy, and and um, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, she's like one of my favorites too. But you know, from all the Waiting for Guffmans and the and the, that yeah, whole, yeah. but. Yeah. But I mean, the good place I thought was just on so many levels, you know, there's so deep, it's so philosophical. So yeah, so, so but yeah. yeah, we have to have some enjoyable things in life that give us escape like books and <laughs> desperately I want so. to wait, um, um, Black Magic is out another a new yeah, one, is out. Out, one is out came out. So there's that Lazarus Risen five will be yes. out next this coming Wednesday, the 28th. Yes, very exciting stuff. So see, there um, are things to keep our minds busy and distracted and have some enjoyment in life. We don't have to be glued if, to the news. Please don't be glued to the this news. This is true. You know, and be just informed, go, but- Go vote, go absolutely. vote, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote. And vote for Biden. Help <laughs> others, help others yes, vote. Yes. Help others vote. And oh, and this is the last thing I'll say. I don't know, like, you know, in California, for instance, you know, there's so many things on the ballot. And in Oregon, we didn't have a lot of ballot measures as compared to some years, mm -hmm. but so on. Go, if, if you find yourself going, Jesus Christ, I don't even know how to choose mm -hmm. here. I find if you like do a, a, a web search for say ACLU of Florida, mm -hmm or uh, even ACLU of Florida and, and your you know, Orange County mm -hmm. uh, voters oh, guide. Oh yeah, there's and a you lot of great find, guides. Also looking, uh, do a search for the League of Women Voters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there are all sorts of resources and you want nonpartisan mm -hmm. ones if you can find them. Um, and look at who's endorsing yep. what. You know, who you, elected who for judges and stuff. That's exactly. a good way to determine. The judges are the yeah. hard one. That one always takes me the most research. Yeah, but if you at least all... look at who appointed them, it can give you some general idea. Like yeah, if DeSantis appointed help. them, like that's a pretty much hard no for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you're like, okay, not yeah, so much. That made, that made it easy. But yeah, that's a great way. Yeah, please be informed voters as well. Don't just like, you know, do the president one and then, cause all the other stuff on there does matter, everybody. <laughs> so please, yeah, yeah, be informed. So that's great. Yeah. I will list a bunch and of the voter guides. Down ballot, down ballot matters a yeah. lot. And check out this Kurzge Um and subscribe to their YouTube channel. I, I think they're brilliant and they're delightful. That's one of the things that I do watch. We'll put those on yes, we're gonna sometime. put these, uh, this link, all these links for people. You're going to, if you've never seen them, you're going to be charmed. Okay. You're absolutely going to be charmed. I need that. So. so, yeah, thank you. Great recommendation. Yeah, you you and Oscar will enjoy <laughs> No, I'm serious. You, it, it is it is great to watch with somebody. Right. And you can giggle. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and you come away going, I was educated. I learned Exactly, exactly. Neat. Love it, love yeah. it. I will link all of that here for everybody. And as always, Greg, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. I appreciate it is you great your talking time. To you. Hello to the family. and um, Yes, and to yours. You. And I hope the rest of the time in the editing goes <laughs> well. Uh, Remains to be seen. But yes, I'll link all that here too for our listeners. I have a big visual uh, fun show coming up um, for, for those who are enjoying like Kung Fu stuff. It won't be very long, but it'll be it'll be good, and it's for a good what cause. Fiftieth anniversary. It's the fiftieth right? anniversary of Wallum, and so instead of doing a live show like I normally do on stage, do I did a virtual right. show, and I've. Yeah. It's much harder actually because now I'm in the editing room and it's uh, oh my goodness it's a whole nother world mm -hmm. of things but it's cool to be directing and kind of matching my love for film as well as stage and kind of putting it together so that's been a lot of fun so that a world Very premiere cool. on November seven I'll link that here I am looking forward yeah. to yeah so awesome awesome all right well Greg until next right. week thank you so much yeah you take care bye that's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to Culture Chat and hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe and rate my podcast. Feel free to leave me suggestions or send an email to mimi at culturechatpodcast.com or follow me on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook.